All right, in this video, we're going to see how to do a change of variables with double integrals. And we're asked to calculate the integral of x minus y, dy dx, over the region r, where r is a parallelogram joining the points 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, and 6, 5. So if you're not given a graph for the region, I think it's a good idea to start by graphing it. I'm going to use GeoGebra to graph this. This allows me to easily input the coordinates of the points. Type. So just enter them separated by a comma in parentheses. And then go to tools, and there is a, a polygon option. Click on that and just click on each of the points. It creates the parallelogram for you. Now, what we like to do is describe the boundary of the region. Um, it's made up of line segments, and uh, using the coordinates of the points, it's not hard to come up with the equations of the lines. Um, you can see the points uh, A and B are connected with a line of slope 1. So y equals x uh, plus 1 seems to fit. C to D is parallel, so that's also slope 1, um, but is minus 1. Y intercept. Um, joining points A and C and B and D, that's a slope of one third. And then you might have to fool around a little bit getting uh, the Y intercept there, it's five thirds. And the other one's three. So these. The equations describe those boundaries, right? And we can take all that information and go back to here. And what you'd like to do is have um, x and y related to some new variables, which we don't have specific ones, so we'll just call them u and v. Um, but sometimes you're converting to some other coordinate system, like R and theta would be your U and V. Um, U and V are just the kind of uh, placeholder variables unless you have something specific. Uh, but this is like very like bespoke uh, change of coordinates. We're doing it just for this parallelogram, right? Now it's not going to necessarily jump out at folks right away. And so the tricky part can be, what is this change of variable? Um, but let's again write those equations, right? We had x plus one, x minus one. And what you're looking at is you're looking at the equations that uh, form the boundary of the region, but you're also looking at the uh, integrating function, your integrand, um, as for hints about what to do with your change of variables. Um, and so the light bulb here would be to realize that, oh, you can use this x minus 1, and you can actually rewrite uh, this as x minus y, sorry, x minus y, yeah, x minus y equals 1, x minus y equals positive one. So that would suggest that x minus y, since it appears um, in, in all those different places, that that be one of your variables, right? Because then we can even see that u will go between negative one and one, u will be the integrand, right? That would make things a lot easier. Right. Um, now we have another one, and so we'll think, okay, can we do something similar with these equations? You can't get x minus y, but um, well, we can write them in a similar way. It would be x minus 3y. And that will be our v. So again, yeah, that wouldn't have been obvious the first time doing it. You do need to see a couple of these to kind of get the hang of how that works. But but the key here is that 
these expressions u and v go between two constants. So we go to the change of variables, the double integral will be essentially over a rectangle in the uv coordinate system. Um, once you've determined those, you still need to have x and y as functions of u and v. So now you're kind of like solving the system or rewriting it in terms of x and y. Um, so if we were to so we do that. And that. And then we could combine these. And we get y as a function of u and v there, right? u minus v over two. Once you have that, that could go back in here or the other one. So now we have x and y as functions of u and v. And we're ready to go on and calculate the Jacobian. So the Jacobian can be defined in some different ways, but the way we have it here is the determinant of a matrix of partial derivatives of these functions, x and y, as functions of u and v. And so in order to evaluate that determinant, we do need to find partial derivatives. Uh, and so we'll need a partial derivative of x with respect to u. Uh, which would be three halves. Partial derivative of x with respect to v, which would be negative one half. So again, that's just using x as a function of u and v there, doing normal partial derivatives. Partial derivative of y with respect to u, one half. So now I'm using that function. And partial derivative of y with respect to v, negative one half. And then you can see we set this up. I mean, it it comes from... this matrix. And then doing the two by two determinant of that. Um, and know that we do have absolute value bars here. We take the absolute value of whatever this is, is it's it's sort of a measurement, uh, a measure, kind of like a length or an area it needs or a volume it needs to be positive. Jacobian for u and v, um, partial x, partial u, we have three halves, partial y, partial v, negative one half, minus partial x, partial v, negative one half, partial y, partial u, positive one half. And so you get negative three fourths plus one fourth. Notice that gives you a negative one and a half, but when we do the absolute value, we just get a regular one and a half. So as you change variables from X and Y coordinate system to this new UV coordinate system that we're creating, um, each unit of measure, like essentially a, a one, a square that's one by one, um, becomes uh, half the size. And the Jacobian accounts for that. Um, now, we've encountered and worked with Jacobians already. Uh, when we go to polar coordinates, right, the R in the dr d theta, that's the Jacobian of switching between rectangular and polar. And in spherical coordinates, right, the rho squared sine phi, that's the Jacobian going from rectangular to spherical coordinates. Um, 
And then this kind of going to this parallelogram, like we're going to a coordinate system where that parallelogram becomes a rectangle um, and that distorts the space. Um, and this one half balances that distort distortion of the space to still give you a, an accurate measure um, of the integral. I mean, the integral is still supposed to be the volume, right? Under this function above the xy plane kind of thing. All right, so at this point, we're ready to move on and write the double integral and then evaluate it. And if we did this right, um, then it should be a pretty easy integral. So this was the integral of x minus y dy dx in the xy coordinate system. Um, I remember we defined u to be x minus y, and in particular, um, from those boundaries, right, x minus y was equal to negative 1 and 1, um, so we have negative 1 is less than u. And then v is the 3x minus y, and v went between negative 5 and negative 9. I guess the negative 9 is the smaller one. So the integrand itself just becomes u. And if we do a u integration first, u will go from negative 1 to 1, and then do a, a v integration, and v will go from negative 9 to negative 5. That bar is kind of in the way. Ah, but what about the Jacobian? So the Jacobian gets put right there uh, before you do the first integration. So we got to slot in the Jacobian, right? Again, it's like the R in the DRD theta, um, except here it's just a constant. So now our integral becomes a nice double integral over a rectangular region. All right, so the integral of u times one half or antiderivative of u times one half would be one fourth u squared. Um, evaluating that at one, we get one fourth uh, minus evaluating it at negative one. Uh, it's also one fourth, and so it gives us zero. Doing the integral of zero is still going to be zero, so you can integrate that at zero. So we end up getting an uh, integral of zero, which means you know the volume above the xy plane and below balance out. Um, and we go on to validation. This also validation sort of justifies the need for this, right? It might seem like it wasn't that hard of an integral to do, right? Because it's got lines and we know those equations. Um, but think about doing this, using the techniques from integrating over general regions, you'd need to break it up into three integrals, right? because you can't have the function kind of changing in the middle. So you'd have to do those three pieces separately and they could all be type one double integrals. And then the limits of integration are only these functions, um, but it gets pretty, pretty messy. It will work. Uh, and I do have the work here for us. You can see the three integrals there. Um, the first piece uh, gives you negative 20 over 27. The middle piece, you get zero. And then the third piece, you get positive 20 over 27. So it does give you zero. Um, I would suggest we, instead of doing that by hand, just use technology, but it can be done by hand. It's, it's done there. Um, and so using Python, 
just kind of set up a, a quick double integration, put in your function. Um, and then again, using those same double integrals, just not doing them by hand. So uh, x plus 5 over 3, that's 1 third x plus 5 thirds, right? And then x plus 1. And then x goes from 1 to 3. So that's the integral from a to b part, right? x going from 1 to 3. Um, and then x plus 1 is the top. And the one third x plus five thirds, we're just writing it as x plus five quantity divided by three is the bottom. Oh, left off an e there. All right. So much easier to get the negative 20 over 27. Now we do the other ones. We don't change the function. Um, we just change the limits of integration. Um, and so now it's x plus nine over three on the top and x plus 5 over 3 on the bottom, and it goes from 3 to 4. This should give us 0. And then on the last one, uh, the top is still x plus 9 over 3, but the bottom is now x minus 1. And that goes from 4 to 6. And so we get those same three values for those integrals and uh, they add up to zero and that validates the result we got. All right. Um, so you could do like a volume kind of thing as well. Look at the 3D graph and do the volume. Um, but I like this validation technique. Definitely there are others. Um, and that'll do it for chapter five on multiple integration. See you in the vector fields chapter.